and welcome back to Project Independence in You, Talk of the Town with Christina Liu um, and of course Otto Los. We just had a great show with um, Cornell Cooperative with Kai. She was so informative and I feel bad. I, like this show was, I mean, we have to, you know, be honest, it was self-serving because <laughs> we're I mean, but I think everybody is constant, has those questions in the back of the head. Like we have people in the office who will remain nameless who are like, I don't go by those dates. I don't care what it says. You know, if it <laughs> smells good, I eat it. And that's exactly what, you know, basically it's what you go by because yeah, it's just, not really inspired uh, well, by. It's yeah, but just like you said, one of your sons can eat the food if it's uh, got a tombstone or whatever you said. I forget. I think that was it. Yeah. And, and I'm in that category. You know, some people, they eat anything that's a little bad and it goes, you know, I happen to be lucky. I mean, it, it, people say, oh, that was terrible. It was really bad. I said, no, it wasn't bad. Yeah, you're just a, a half a glass half full kind of guy, Otto, you know? I mean, you know, it's, it's no skill on my part. It's just that, you know, for whatever yeah. reason, my stomach or whatever it is that makes these things not work for some people, uh, it doesn't matter to me. I also think a lot of it's mental because I have to laugh because as we've mentioned, this is a topic all of us, you know, discuss about quite regularly and especially in my own household um, because, you know, I, I get like a little wacky with dates, but my husband is like super crazy with dates. So if, 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 that, date is on, if that date is on there, it's out. Jay sees it, you know, forget it. There's like no grace period or anything. I'm way more of a grace period kind of gal for certain items, right? So if it's like bread... I'm like, I feel like if bread's in my fridge, it can kind of like linger a little longer, right? Or with eggs, because once that date is there and I'm going to show him, you know, the material I have that says I wanted that, to ask about eggs. I know. Yeah, me I'm too. I had that on my list. Yeah. I know. I just popped in my brain because that's like a fight we always get into. And I was, I was like, the egg is still fine. And I've looked it up online numerous times. And it says, you know, that as, as Kai had mentioned, it's really just, it's not that you're going to get ill from it or something. It just might not be the quality as potent as, um, you know, you would expect. Because I have a lot of friends and people I know that have chickens and have like chicken eggs and stuff. And they don't seem to be worrying about the date. So, well, <laughs> well I mean, they're probably you... eating them fresh, though. Yeah, yeah but there's so many. So eggs. you're not eating all those eggs at one time, you know. If you boil an egg, how long can you keep a boiled egg for? Uh, we used to go to a bar that had uh, boiled eggs on the bar uh, and it'd be oh, yeah. in, a, in a big jar. Um, and I have no idea how long those eggs were there. It's a good uh, question. I get a little weird with that. Like if I boil yeah. an egg, I, I just, I'm eating it like immediately just because I don't like, yeah. like the smell to get a little, um, we've had like, you know, Easter eggs in our fridge a little too long, you know, and it starts to go. get that smell and you start getting, yeah. oh, you know, I don't know, but. Um, well, it's just interesting. I think it was a great segment, you know, filled with a lot of tips and tricks, you know, and I was thinking, you know, especially when Kai did those staggering numbers of all the food that was wasted last year. And I, I really do believe a huge part of it was because of COVID. And, you know, people were stocking up, they weren't going to grocery stores as often. So when they did, it was like this. I mean, I'm speaking from, you know, my own experience. You right, know? And, right. So you were like, you would stock up on all of this or, you know, you were just, you know, there, you were scared that it wasn't going to be there. I mean, there were so right. many oh, yeah. things, you know, and I know that we were, you know, doing that too. And obviously, you know, now with a little more, you know, stability, you know, you don't have, you don't have that same kind of panic, you know? So now the only things that I really just like to have, you know, are like non-perishable kind of things, you know, like paper towels or, or toilet paper, you know, I, that's, I, we, that's a staple in our, in our house of things that we, uh, we go through quite often. Um, but I think that that certainly um, had a mentioned part. And Easter. I'm sorry, but you mentioned Easter eggs, all right. Mm -hmm. uh, and some from some countries, there's and our family practices it mm -hmm. because there's some Lithuanian in the background on Bunny side, where on Easter you crack eggs, you mm -hmm. tap the front of the yeah, eggs the Greek together, we do it too. The decorated eggs. Yes. Mm -hmm. And it, the one whoever's egg cracks is out, and then the other people mm -hmm. go and. That, Eventually, you have a champion egg cracker, you know, mm -hmm. the one, the last egg that survived. And for years, we kept, because they have dates I know. I think them. about that story, Otto, of yours all the time. Yeah, I told you that. Yeah. Probably. But we keep them 
And where I'm going with this is you keep them. We talk about how long can you store a boiled egg? Because that basically is a boiled yeah, egg. Yeah. All right. If you keep them long enough, eventually the egg rattles. Like there's nothing in the egg, but maybe the yolk would shrunk to a very little tiny thing. So and Otto, guess, how are you keeping them? Were you just keeping them out? No, well, we finally gave that up and we gave them, they were in a bowl, like decorative oh. bowl, you know, in the dining room. Mm-hmm. Uh, and eventually uh, it was decided we're going to give everybody their own egg for the year they won. Oh. Uh, and it turns yeah. out, though, that these eggs are not good, you know. Yeah. You want, you want to want to eat those boiled eggs. <laughs> it's really interesting, you know, and I was glad that you guys discussed the topic of, you know, freezing meats. Listen, I came from a family. My grandparents always had meat in the freezer. My, they had like a whole method. There was, you know, and my, well, my grandpa, you know, they had the label of when like, and I was always impressed. So we grew up like that. I have yet to master like the freezing and defrosting of meats adequately. It's like the bane of my existence. I was just, so I always give up and I'm like, I'd rather just buy it, you know, without having to deal with this because, you know, as you had said, there's, there's so many common myths. You know, when my, I laugh with my mom because, you know, she said when she was growing up, I mean, her parents, they would just throw the meat on the counter. It would just sit there all day long, you know, defrosting, <clears throat> you know, and then now you hear all these things about bacteria and you really shouldn't do that. So there's so many conflicting kind of views on that, you know, so it's just, um, you know, or to defrost it in the refrigerator, not actually out in the open. It's, uh, it's quite that we could do a whole segment on that, because I'm telling you, I can never and I feel like it's never fully defrosted every time I do it, you know, it's just, uh, it's quite the uh, quite the issue. So it's we could have Kai, Kai back on with all these hot topics. Yeah, definitely. She but I good. like, you know, the banana thing is something I recently started to do as well you know, is to, to cut it up and, and freeze it. And it's it just, it's just great, you know, as you had mentioned for smoothies or just as like, you know, a snack itself. Um, I didn't know you yeah. could do that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, I grew up in the era with the song, you know, don't put the banana in the refrigerator. Have mm-hmm. you ever heard that? By What was her name? Shakita banana <laughs> or oh. somebody like that. Mm-hmm. And that do not put the banana in the refrigerator. And that's yeah. actually so put a it in song. The freezer. Right there you go. You put it right in the freezer. Put it right. Yeah. They cut it up. Yeah. And then if you want to make a shake or a protein shake, you can throw the bananas in frozen and it's just delish. That's but Otto, I also had to laugh because your conversation about blueberries reminds me of my mom because my mom says the same thing about blueberries now. And she's like, it's just missing the potency of like what it used to taste like. So apparently, you know, you and Barbara can have a whole conversation about. Yeah, the, uh, honestly, blueberries now, strawberries aren't so bad. The strawberries right now are pretty good, actually. But the blueberries, I don't know what happened to the blueberry farms, but uh, they, most blueberries have no taste whatsoever. You know, it's like chewing on nothing, yeah. really. But this is what, you know, and I know we've brought this up on the show before and, and a lot of we've had Cornell on before and they've mentioned that, you know, actually frozen, buying frozen vegetables is really beneficial a lot of times. You know, people think, oh, it's not as good as a fresh produce thing. Um, but for a lot of things, it's actually better. So for like a smoothie purpose even or some kind of parfait or, or whatever, it actually works better to have the frozen um, vegetables and that's I've what actually, I do. I buy frozen. And I've started. Fruit. I've started freezing herbs as well um, because mm. you know they go bad so fast. You know you buy yeah. them; they're all like vibrant and beautiful. But it, but it's like you know you're buying this giant bundle, and I'm like, there's no way I'm going through like a giant bundle of like you know mint um, in you know in the time that I should be. And and if you think about it, Christina too, if you buy frozen vegetables that are that go from farm to freezer, right. That happens instantaneously mm-hmm. when, if you're buying it at the store, you're, you're looking at a week or yeah. two of travel if it's coming from California or wherever, you know, if it's coming local, then you're not going to be as yeah. long. But if you're getting fruit, I mean, look where some of the fruit comes from. Yeah. Florida, they're on a, they're on a truck, yeah. you know, yeah. by the time we get it, it's already many, many days old, if not a yeah. week or two. So um, if you get frozen food, it's, it goes right to the freezer from the farm. The only thing I do, I believe, is you, it does lose some of its nutrients when it freezes. But it, I mean, you're also losing nutrients when it's traveling. Right. For two and weeks. that's what I think, you know, it's, it's a hard thing to wrap your head around because I think, you know, listen, we all have 
you know, it's a different time now. You know, we all have it's, things that our family have done, you know, even just in the conversation about where you keep your potatoes or this or that, you know, it's like everyone's got kind of their own <clears throat> little thing that works. But I think, you know, we're in a time where there are certain things, you know, and you have to be open. I'm glad that we were able to have, you know, Kai on to, to kind of inform us about these little things that, you know, you could could really do um, to to maximize that and to not like you know, yeah. slack on the, the frozen. You know, if you go right down to the bottom of this thing and look at it, it, a lot of it really comes down to buying smart and buying in quantities that make sense for your situation. Mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, I mean, like you said, the fr frozen vegetables, produce, all right, it's a couple of weeks. How about fresh produce? I mean, that's not, well, like we said in her segment, how fresh is fresh? And right. you could buy it on a farm right stand right. Out, on, out east somewhere. Or, right. You know, it's, it, it takes time. Some of this yeah. stuff comes from another But Otto, country. I had to laugh also about your salami comment, because that's what we always discuss in my house. We believe, like, salami just lasts, like, the longest thing possible. And we're, no one is, like, quite sure why. Um, but it just seems to be, like, the, the cold cut that kind of goes strong. Um, amongst all the rest. And it probably has something to do with like the different preservatives. Nitrates. I mean, it's yeah. like it has more, I think it does have more of that, like a hot yeah. dog, you know? Right. Yeah, which probably makes it not good for you, but. You oh, know. no, it's not good for you. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> like, you know, what are we going to do? But that's um, not what this show is about. So don't go that's there. Right. Right. Exactly. What no about lettuce? Zone. We didn't you touch know, on lettuce, zone. all right? We wind up throwing, if you have two people like we do, and you buy a head of lettuce and only one person really eats a little more salad than the other person. So now you got this head of lettuce, which you feel it's solid. It's good, fresh head of lettuce. And how long does that last before it goes bad? And you wind up throwing a half a head of lettuce yeah. out. Yeah. I'll tell you buy... what, the, at least that lasts longer than like bag lettuce, because once you open one of those bags, you know, of lettuce, it's a wrap. Like you really, maybe yeah. you can get like one more day out of it. But you know what I think, and this is what I really need to remember. And I'm, I'm going to put this into practice. You know, what Kai was saying, it's, it's, it's so much about making sure there's not like oxygen getting into these things to kind of make that process. Cause I think about that, you know, when I open my bag of lettuce and there might be, you know, some left and I just like roll it up and I throw a piece of tape on it and like put it back in. But you know, it's really not like a tight seal. So I think, you know, I want to like try and, and I think with that head of lettuce to get like, you know, cling wrap and really kind of just try to combat any moisture getting into that, uh, I think is so important. You know, and I was even thinking when she was saying, you know, just talking about moisture and with the herbs and a lot of times when you buy fresh herbs, they're like damp, you know, and I think it's really important to pat that so it doesn't, you know, create like these, you know, damp environments for these things. So these are all little tricks that I'm going to a lot of golden nuggets today. And I'm going to have to be putting these into a into practice throughout the weekend. I'll be preaching this. I'm really excited to have her notes um, that she sent over. I think I'm going to ask them to give us some tips for the Pioneer newsletter as well. Um, because oh, it's, certainly, it's certainly something that I think everyone, you know, you know, can, can use these little like tips and tricks and um it was a great, so, great segment. So since we are talking about produce, we should get into talk of the town. However, I just want to ask you guys a question. The baggies at the produce section, you know, what's your trick to get them open when you can? <laughs> like, what do you do? Do you, you know? know do you know? Why is it very interesting? I used to struggle. I don't even know anymore because I used to have more difficulty getting it open. I don't know if they're making them different. Or now, I'll but tell I'm you what it is. Otto, do you know the secret to getting them open? Really yank it. I mean, no. The one thing, the only thing you could do is you get a, a, a little moisture on your hands. Yeah. And it just opens just like that. Yeah, because I'm trying well, to think, that, you know. I'm... That's like taking a newspaper or something where you want to right. separate the pages. And you go like that and, you know. Right. So like you have to go to like a like a vegetable that has a little moisture on it and just put it on your finger and then you there can you open it. But you don't want to go like this anymore in the you know. And well, you know at what home I you can do that. Finger, what I wanted to ask Kai, like which I three, saw, you know. what I saw in the notes also that she didn't get um, a chance to because I know this is something that I always you know <clears throat> kind of have issues with is I never know like I'll buy avocados right I'll buy a full bag of avocados. 
and either sometimes they feel feel very soft, and I'm like, oh no, like it's like if I don't use this, you know, today or tomorrow, it's like kaputs. You know, you open it and it's all like you know brown or whatever. And then it's the other extreme of like it's green and it's like so hard, and it just I have some avocados that I just feel like never ripen. Yeah. And it's like they're just there. They're just like, and I'm just one day I'm like, hopefully, you know, they'll ripen. But I looked at her notes, and she was saying if you take. Um, you know, some kind of fruit or vegetable that you want to ripen and you put it in a closed paper bag with a ripe banana, it'll speed up the process. So I'm going to try that out too. You know, when I, because there's nothing worse than that. The two different kinds of gas. Yes. What was it called? It was a. I sent that to like the gas sensitive and the gas gas sensitive and gas releasing. And that's what she had touched upon. And I'm actually wanted, that's another note I put on myself because. You know, unfortunately, listen, I don't, I, you know, I would love to have, you know, a Kardashian refrigerator that's gigantic and that you could fit all kinds of things in. But, you know, you have to uh, be careful about what you put next to each other, which is just um, a lot of great tips. Well, we have to take a quick break. You're listening to Project Independence and You, Talk of the Town on 88.1 FM and WCWP.org. We will be right back after a quick break. So I get this call from my grandma and she's like, What's a podcast and how much does it cost? So I tell her, podcasts are like radio shows, but you can download them on any device and listen to them anywhere at any time and they're free. And then she says, I see, but where can you find good ones? And I'm like, go to wcwp.org slash podcast and check out the lineup of original shows or download any podcast app on your phone or tablet and search for LIU Studios. And she's all like, Oh, that sounds easy. And then she asked me what an app is. LIU Studios Podcasts. Available on any podcast app. You know, those little button things on your phone screen. Just ask your grandkids. And welcome back to Project Independence in You, Community Talk Radio on 88.1 FM and WCWP.org. Host today, Rebecca Miller, along with Otto Los, and of course, Christina Liu, who is our fantastic radio show producer and also um, the director of senior citizen affairs for the Department of Services for the Aging Project Independence. Um, This is talk of the town segment. Of course, we were just wrapping up the the radio show uh, with our guest who is just going over everything, food safety, best ways to, you know, keep food, protected and last longer and freezer and fridge. It was really great. And I know that we're going to have her back again because we still have a million questions and she just, she was so great. And, you know, as I had mentioned, we've had Cornell Cooperative Extension on a bunch of times and they've done things. They've done chats for us and and articles and they are just on so many topics. It's just such a a wonderful resource. Um, So I want to remind people, if you are interested in more information about this, um, they have such great material on their website, but if you don't have access to it, call 311 or 516-869-6311, and I'll be more than happy to send you um, the article that, like, you know, shows you all the different tips and tricks about, you know, food storage and, and food dating um, and whatnot. And you could also give uh, Cornell Cooperative Extension a call at 516-832-2591. Christina, um, on you know, top of nutrition, had, they do a lot of gardening things as well. Yeah, I'm sorry. We've had people on, and maybe mm-hmm. other times when I wasn't on, mm-hmm. uh, with segments of Cornell Cooperative. Maybe we should have somebody on that gives the whole picture, because I every time we do this and I look up what they're all about, it's a, it's a big operation. Mm-hmm. You know, it's a national, federally funded program, mm-hmm. and uh, it probably would be good to get into it from a top level, you know, mm-hmm. as to all the things that this organization does and, and, uh, you know, how it's structured and, uh, you know, educate ourselves and frankly, other people uh, about the organization, because they do a lot more than I ever thought. Yeah, uh, no, it, it's like know. a huge resource. You know, my husband, for his landscape uh, design, when he was doing that would do a lot with Cornell Cooperative, because they're great to ask, you know, you can call them up and say, you know, what is this, you know, do soil testing. I mean, there's so many different things that uh, conversations you could have with them. Um, so it's, it's another great resource uh, that's in our town. So that is just, um, is really great. Um, but from that, I just want to remind people that next week uh, we have another great topic, which uh, there's a lot of topics coming up that are 
clearly topics that we all discuss. And so clearly food storage was one of them. And next week we are going to have on managing anxiety and stress. Um, a clinical, a Jennifer McKelvey, for, she's a clinical psychologist over at Northwell Health. Um, she will be on diving into that. Um, and then we have a really fun topic too, uh, which is just showing you an amazing young woman doing great things in the community. It's someone that Beck actually knows. Um, her name is Gianna Pileshi, and she is the founder of Pink Pom Pom, which is um, an organization that she created to help fight breast cancer. So we'll find out about all of that. So she will be on to um, next week. So it's great to be back. It's been so long, it feels like. So to I know that people have just, their brains have just been dormant waiting for us to stimulate them. And I think today really kicked it off for everyone. Um, but in also exciting news is that Monday, July 11th, is what, Beck? It is the first the fun first, day. First fun day Monday, the return of fun day Monday, um, seven weeks. And um, we've got quite quite a lineup. We're all kind of excited. Weather looks good. Um, you know, there's a lot of things going on. There's pickleball. There's, there, Which I think know, is so exciting, you know, and I have to say, Around the office, there's been so much planning and so many revisions and, and new things that are going on. And there's a lot of new performers um, that are going to be there. But the pickleball um, is going to be really exciting. I mean, that's certainly uh, quite the hot topic in game. So the fact that that will be incorporated into Fun Day Monday, along with line dancing and, and fitness. Um, the far Is there a farmer's market going to be there this year or... Not necessarily. I don't know yet. It does not appear to be, but um, I don't, I'm not going to say no. You know, we are going to have a health fair, so I don't right. know what they're going to have in store for that. Um, you know, we're doing pickleball, line dancing, fitness classes. So there's going to be a lot of activities. And though we are going to be at the beach, I just want to ask everyone, please wear good shoes, wear sneakers. If you're going to be Great doing point. any of the, um, any of the fitness classes, line dancing, if you're going to be dancing, please just make sure to wear, you know, sneakers, shoes that, you know, protect your feet. And whenever there's a problem, it's always someone's wearing flip flops and it could be any age. It's just, mm -hmm. you know, you want to make sure that you're, you're protecting your feet. You don't fall or anything like that. That's certainly but, a great um, it's going to be great. We're going to have the cafe back and we're doing the whole card where you check off and, um, yeah, so it's going to be like the back to the the normal fun when day. When you Monday, say so you're so going to do pickleball, what do you actually mean? You're going to, is there a pickleball court now in North Good, good Beach question. Park? And so will what, there be equipment there so you can use the equipment? So we hired a pickleball instructor. And what we do is the basketball court, which is right in the vicinity of Fun Day Monday, we're right. setting up two courts. So at 9 a.m. every Fun Day Monday, the pickleball instructor will be there to help people kind of learn. Um, they do have to sign up, but I don't think it's going to be a problem. And then for the rest of Fun Day Monday, we leave the nets up. So if, you know, we have a couple of paddles and balls, if you're most of the people that played, I think last year we had it set up too. And they, most people bring their own paddles, but we do have the net still be two set up. And, um, you know, we do have this new pickleball instructor from 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. Every Funday Monday. Every Funday Monday. I'm going to hit one of those. Oh, right. there you go. We can all watch. You can come down to the beach and well, watch. At one Otto point in my life, dabble. I did play tennis and paddle ball where you play off the wall with a ball mm -hmm. um and i've seen pe people play pickleball and uh it's actually a pretty calm game uh at least the people i've seen play it uh you know it's not like uh you know i think it's a can be a lighter game depending on uh, your skill level probably once you get into the higher level i'm sure pickleball like any other game gets uh more competitive and more uh, difficult to play. Well, it is. It is. My friends, actually, yeah. I have friends that play and they're in a competition. And yeah, I, it depends best. because I know people, you know, <clears throat> originally, I think, you know, when people heard pickleball, they thought of like, oh, it's like a senior game, you know, and that's kind of how it was like being marketed. But as the years have gone on, I know so many young people who are now playing pickleball 
And sometimes, you know, as you were saying, like based on skill level, it can get a little competitive and um, intense. But I think, obviously, it's based upon your skill level. But I see people at Clinton G. Martin Park um, you know, playing it all the time on the courts over there, and uh, it's it's always packed. So it's certainly a crowd pleaser. So I think it's really great that this is incorporated into. into well, one, many years ago, I used to play a lot of ping pong, and believe it or not, if you play heavy duty ping pong, you mm -hmm. can work up quite a sweat. Yeah. Uh, just playing ping pong. Absolutely. Uh, you know, there's a lot of movement, and uh, I'm sure pickleball could fall into that category. Yeah. So it's great, and this, and this is, uh, I think that's what's so lovely about Fun Day Monday is. There's really something there for everyone, um, and it's so beautiful to be at the beach. Um, you know, it, it's just there's always just like a beautiful little breeze there, and it's just it's a great atmosphere. And I think the performers are just going to be so wonderful. On July 11th, will be Stan and Edie, so they will be performing. And Beck had mentioned earlier about the health fair, and I just want people to mark that down because that's a great place to go to get all kinds of information from a bunch of different organizations and that's going to be on july 25th um so 11 a.m 2 p.m and we need to admit um also promote that there is a bus pickup schedule um for it so there's a bunch of different locations depending on your region that um there will be uh free transportation to the beach so i think that that's um really really great too and and for anyone that's coming to park, it's free for them. They don't have to pay anything to, to park there. So it's a win-win for everyone. Check it out. As Rebecca said, the weather looks like it's great. And once yeah, again. Yeah, I'm checking it right now. <clears throat> so there you go. Good. Could I ask you a question on the, on the transportation? Uh, I've had people ask me this, actually. Mm -hmm. um, you have pickup points for the bus. Yes. Mm -hmm. Is there any suggestion on how people might get to the pickup point? You know, I, you have to get centrally located within the neighborhood. So there's actually um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight locations in the town that um, where, where people can meet. So there. Yeah, so you know, basically, uh, you're you're on your own in terms of getting to the pickup point. And yeah. Maybe friend, family, taxi. Well, I mean, for example, they stop in. Bus number four, there, there, I'm sorry, I should say, I should say this differently. There are eight bus runs. Yes. Within those bus runs, there's a lot of pickup. A lot points. of locations. Like, right. like in Great oh. Neck, they go to Terrace Apartments, then Great Neck Railroad Station, then the Great Neck Social Center. They go to Arendelle Apartments and 444 Middle Neck Road. They go to um, the Sh Sheridan Boulevard and Jericho Turnpike. First Presbyterian Church. I mean, in Mineola Williston Park alone, there's one, two, three, yeah. four, five, six, seven, eight, eight stops. So, so the way, I'm sorry, but how, like the call 311 to get Yeah, call 311, and it's on all the flyers, all the bus stops and locations. Right. On the back. Yeah, everyone, pretty much people that um, have any questions about transportation should always call 311. And Beck, with transportation, you don't have to like register for the bus, right? Like, so as long no, as you're you just have to stop. go. Yeah, you don't. You can go to the stops. Great. So there you heard it here. Call 311. Is it, and uh, like, will it go to one stop multiple times in a day? Or is it like one time that the bus starts yes. and you have to get it on it on that run? I mean, there's only like one run. Correct. Right? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. They'll be given the time and the run. And, you know, it, it's always worked. It's mm -hmm. we've never had complaints. And when, you know, I think over the years, two people have said, hey, it would be great if you could come to Jericho Turnpike and, you know, Sheridan Boulevard. Yeah, because I feel like this year there's even more stops. Than yeah, I mean, ever. there are so many stops. There is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's like eight buses. And within each bus, they're making multiple stops. Yeah. So. Great. And I just want to remind people that, you know, if the weather is bad on Monday, it's going to be held, the, you know, the Thursday that follows, weather permitting, right. obviously. So you could always call 311, though, or 516-869-6311 to really um, just get, you know, gauge. We don't want anyone showing up. So just always call first, your best bet, because they will know if it's if it's canceled. So I have a fun day Monday flyer that's not the up this is that's not the updated one the other one's in your packet it should be two out of that i sent you yeah 
Okay. Okay. Because on the back of this one, it doesn't give the details. Right. No, we, yeah. we've updated it all now. So the front okay. doesn't have that whole fun day, Monday, welcome yeah. back, Monday, Monday. Which is good for people to know because they may have, you know, edition one of the flyer. And right. I want to remind you, people can call through on one and, you know, someone from our team will send out, um, you know, we'll mail you a flyer so you can have it if you want a hard copy. But right. It's, uh, and also. One okay. more thing about Fun Day Monday and inclement weather doesn't mean just rain. If it's yes. over 90 degrees, point. the likelihood is that they will postpone it too because we've had, you know, if, if it looks like it's going to be 90 later in the day, it really depends, you know, will we may at a point, if it seems like it's getting too hot, could even cut the day an hour or two off and transportation will all, you know, will be adjusted to that time. So it's not just the rain. No, absolutely. And I think that that's, um, you know, and listen, the amount of work that community services and, you know, DOSA as, as Beck is so involved in Fun Day Monday, um, nobody wants to cancel Fun Day Monday. So we really, yeah. there's a lot of thought that goes into monitoring. I mean, I laugh because it looks like a weather station, you know, they're tracking the heat index and, you know, so there's a yeah. lot that goes in and, and everyone just wants people to do it safely. Um, so that's, you know, I looked at the list of concerts and the list of all the different things that go on here. Mm -hmm. um, and what entered my head was the tremendous amount of work that has to be involved in booking these bands, these groups, mm -hmm. these whatever. Is this pretty shared among Project Independence or? A, um, different aspects of Fun Day Monday is shared, but I usually book all the entertainment. Like I do yeah. the bands and the fitness instructors and that kind of stuff. Right. That's work. That's a good job. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you know, speaking of that, I, I know you had granted, mentioned but that. I mean, it doesn't happen by osmosis. Somebody has to do a lot there, of work. It does not. And on top of, you know, the parks department offers a lot of concerts um as well so i always want to remind people that there's so so much to do this summer so coming up this weekend on saturday july 9th there is going to be at manor haven beach park street fighter the rolling stone tribute band will be over there at north Hampstead beach park um they ask you bring a blanket or a chair um it's just it's a great time and i just think uh, i really uh, but obviously call and just make sure that weather is good. So there, they have so many concerts. I mean, every, there's like one to two every weekend. Um, so the following week also will be a YouTube tribute band at Tully Park. There'll be a Phil Collins tribute band the following week. I mean, it is, it's absolutely endless. Right. And on top of the concerts that are available, there's also movies in the park. So on July 12th, it's going to be Wreck-It Ralph, which is a great uh, family-friendly movie that's going to be at Jerry Pond Park, um, which I must say is very dear in my heart. I spent a lot of time at Jerry Pond Park when I was in, um, in high school. That was like our, you know, our park of choice. Um, and then there's Shakespeare in the Park is also on Saturday, July 9th at 6 p.m. at Clark Botanic Garden. Um, so these are really nice outdoor activities. I encourage everyone to certainly um, check all those out because... As you had mentioned, Otto, a lot of time and work goes into this, and there's always new and innovative um, things going on. So certainly check that out. And if you are a Rolling Stones fan, that Street Fighter band is fantastic. If you like the Rolling Stones, Otto, go see Street Fighter because you're really going to love them at Manor Haven. They were big in the 40s, right? <laughs> they've actually been there are a few of the guys in this rolling stones band that have been in it since the 70s yeah right. it's awesome yeah. so great so definitely and well as I, we've talked about this on the show before music is always uh definitely generational if you will yeah and what's interesting is uh, we just went to a wedding uh at a gorgeous place dockers out in uh, east quag uh and it was a beautiful night and, you know, the whole bit. And it actually was one of the better DJs as far as that goes. That, uh, you know, they, they, they took time for air. They breathed once in a while. Uh, and they played a variety of stuff that actually hit people. But not once was there a song played that would be like a foxtrot or a rumba or a waltz or right. a polka or a tango or, you know, so... What Bunny and I, my wife, were talking about is that basically that kind of dancing is gone. You know, it's not done anymore anywhere. No. Uh, 
And well, unless you you're watching school. Dancing with the Stars, um, you know. Well, and, uh, yeah, but that's the exception, yeah. you know. Yeah. It, you know what? I'll bring it back. At... You and Bunny, bring it back. Well, yeah. I mean, truthfully, it's it, it's it's a if you think about it, it's a whole genera many generations. Uh, I mean, they used to do the Charleston. and You know what, Otto, we have to take a quick break. We'll be right back after um, a few moments. You're listening to Project Independence and you. We'll be right back. Take WCWP with you wherever you go with the WCWP app. Listen live 24-7 to all of our streams, all from one app. Plus, call the studios directly from the app and visit our social media. Download the app through the iOS App Store on Apple devices or the Google Play Store on Android by searching WCWP Radio or visit WCWP.org for links. The WCWP app, available now on iOS and Android devices. And welcome back to Project Independence and You, Community Talk Radio on 88.1 FM and WCWP.org. Rebecca Miller, along with Otto Lose and Christina Liu. I cannot believe that we are in the last segment of the show. It just went so fast between, um, between our first guest and learning all about um, food storage and expiration dates. And it just went into so much, so, so much more. And, um, you know, talking all about what's going on in the town. So uh, what is going on in the town? Well, there's quite a lot going on. Um, as we had mentioned, there's a lot of fun summer activities, uh, project independence, as well as, you know, a lot of our groups are, you know, might be taking a little bit of a hiatus, but some, you know, are, are meeting throughout the month of July, taking off August. So um, if you still are interested in any of those kind of the men's group or the social discussion group, you can call 311 to register. Um, and I, a great thing that's coming up in August is brain games. Um, this is going to be presented with our Project Independence Nurses. They're going to have um, three different sessions uh, kicking off in August at uh, Great Neck Social Center, at Port Washington Adult Activity Center, and at the Hillside Public Library. And it's just a fun hour to exercise your brain. There's different brain teasers and puzzles. And, you know, on I love these. I've seen the nurses do it before. And, you know, on top of the benefits of kind of getting your brain thinking in different ways, it becomes a fun kind of social thing and people are talking and, and sharing, um, you know, because a lot of times people might be embarrassed that they don't get it, but, you know, everyone's kind of in the, in the same boat. So that is um, going to be uh, a, a great thing. So please, their space is limited for that. So I want everyone to uh, certainly get a spot to call 311. And then you mentioned brain games, by mm -hmm. the way, uh, Wordle is a mm -hmm. brain game mm -hmm. and uh, uh my family has a, a snapchat they, you, they were doing it on that G email first but mm -hmm. they switched to snapchat but anyhow uh there's about a dozen of us that do wordle every day and i encourage seniors to, if they have the computer or mm -hmm. a laptop or a phone or whatever a tablet just go to the uh put in wordle website and up pops the wordle game and it's really kind of fun it's every day a new word, and uh, it's kind of kicks your day off with uh, makes you think a little. Five letter word. Um, you start. I don't know if you played it yet, but it's pretty interesting. I've seen, and I just think you know that's such a great kind of tidbit. You know, Otto, is that you know there's these little tiny things that I think you could do. You know, a lot of times you know people are always talking about. The, you know, that they feel isolated. And I know like seniors and from the rest of the family and from the grandkids, they can't necessarily, you know, relate to, I mean, there's so many different things, but what you said, the fact of doing this, it brings, it can bring like the whole family can do this one little thing each day, get the conversation going. Um, and it's a, a simple thing that can go a long way. So you're right, Otto, if you, if people, and it's got benefits for so many reasons. So it's one of those little fun things that everyone could kind of do. Um, so I, I like that little little tidbit. Um, but speaking of brain games, in August, I just want to remind people, we did, uh, if I could find, my papers are quite disheveled here. Um, a bunch of the upcoming, I mentioned next week's radio show um, about the uh, managing anxiety and stress. Um, on top, if I could find it, we will get back to that. Oh, here it is. 
Um, then we also have coming up the National Library Service for the Blind and Disabled are going to come on discussing about talking books and other services that are provided. This came up um, a couple of weeks, months back. Uh, we brought it up. So I really think this is um, great to spread the word on the programs they're doing. Then we're going to have this organization on called MedMinder. It's this really interesting um, device, and, and we're always talking about new technologies to kind of keep people safe and at home. And it's a great way to, um, if you're taking a lot of medication, it's this really interesting device to kind of make sure you stay on track with that. So excited to learn about that. I've been booking August as well. Um, so we have a lot of kind of interesting segments. And in line with the brain games, we have on um, the Alzheimer's Association discussing just healthy living for your brain and body. You know, I think we're always about kind of taking proactive kind of measures. So they have, they do a wonderful program. I actually saw them do the presentation um, not that long ago at, at our building. And it was just such an engaging conversation and with great tips and, and lots of golden nuggets. So they will be on. I also tracked down um, PSEG because I received some promotional stuff in the mail um, just about some kind of like assistance programs. I mean, we always know this is the time of year with, you know, costs with ACs on, and then the winter you have heating costs, you know, so there's a lot of different programs out there that they will talk about. And in addition to that, someone will be coming on from PSEG to talk about the electric utility scams um, that are going mm -hmm. on. So we kind of have a two-part uh, series that is that it should be really informative. So that's also in August. And then I'm hoping to, I have a bunch of different people, it's either going to be August or in September, <laughs> an old favorite um, of our show is Fran Green um, from the oh, Flirting Bible. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I just had to share it on the air because she told me to send my love to both Otto and Rebecca. Um, we were talking because, um, you know, for the next issue of the Pioneer, we really want to do something about kind of reconnecting and joining things. Project Independence is doing a lot of new innovative programs in the fall. So I know... We, it's just one of those things, listen, we're still getting our feet wet. Uh, you know, a lot of people are still not that comfortable about getting back in or mm. they want to get their toe into it. So it's really important, and we say it all the time on the show, about being sensitive of that fact to other people and, and just giving you, you know, the information and you choose to, to do it. So we were trying to think, I said, who's better than Fran Green to give you some tips with a, with a little spin of humor um, on to, you know, kind of getting back out there and, and not being afraid of technology, you know, to, to meet people and stuff. So it's the art of flirting, right? She, yeah. And it's, but you know, and I love about Fran, you know, it's more than that because it's about friendships and it's just about putting yourself out there and, you know, kind of, you know, it's, and, and now I think it, she was, even, we had a whole conversation about how she feels too, you know, it's such an important time to respect people's comfortability and, and to even give yourself a pass. You know, you, you might be, there's so much pressure. Oh, I should do this. Oh, I shouldn't do this. And, you know, I think we have to be, everyone's got their own kind of comfortability level and Fran will dive into it. And she is absolutely hilarious. Um, she had me hysterically laughing on the phone. So Fran's always a good time. So we are looking to have her back on the show um, to do that as well. So, and I want to encourage anyone, if there is a topic or a speaker that you think will be beneficial for our program, please call 311 or 516-869-6311 because uh, I want to have things that people are interested in. So definitely um, um, check that out. Um, so that's a little plug on that. And, of course, you can always watch us on North Hempstead TV as well as listening to us on the radio. So, Christina, how far in advance do you usually book speakers like – do you try to like stay like one to two months ahead or what works yes. out best for yeah, you? Yeah, so I try one, two months ahead. Um, listen, there's, there's some times that it's crazier, but you know. Right, right. Um, based on scheduling and, and we try to make sure everyone's around. You know, I try to not get too crazy. Dan has to pull the reins on me sometimes from going too far um, ahead. But um, yeah, so I'm just going to wait. And, and let's it, talk about Dan. I That's mean, right. Congratulations to Dan, who is a grandfather of two now, uh, which is, is really exciting uh, news. Two beautiful and grandbabies. Keeping our show going, even in his retirement, right? It's like, he I just mean, can't, he can't leave us. So That's actually, really I, know it. Like, I don't know. I know you don't like to show up on here, but we are 
so grateful to you for the continuation right. of this program. And we love you. And we're so excited that you're grandpa times two. That's right. Um, and he's just not allowed to ever leave us. So I'm just going to leave that I know, that's there. He, he knows how I feel about that. And that's that. <laughs> um, right. uh, I also want to tell people that coming up on August 2nd is National Night Out. Um, it used to just be a one location kind of thing. This year, it is three different locations. Um, National Night Out, it's really a great reason to bring the community all together uh, for a good cause and just really kind of have the neighborhood, the police, and the government partnership. Um, and it's just a, it, it's a great community event. So that is going to be August 2nd. There's going to be one at um, Bunky Reed Park. So that is where the original one used to be. Um, and that is that there's a parade, festivities, there's an assembly, there's a bunch of different vendors going on. Um, it, it's really a beautiful event. And that starts um, at 5 p.m. Um, and then there's going to be one at Manhasset Valley Park, uh, which is from 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. And then there's going to be one at Alvin Petrus Park is going to be 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. Um, as well. So depending on where your area is. Step out for a minute. Publishers Clearinghouse was at the door. Oh, uh, it happened. With the whole team. Um, I mean, so I'm keeping them out there. I'm going to wait. But I did <laughs> yeah. Oh, wait. Did you, uh, did you win the bundle? Yeah, they're all out there. They got their yeah. own the truck and everything. <laughs> Couldn't happen to a greater fellow. <laughs> That's there right. Absolutely. I mean, we filled out all the papers, you know, when we got <laughs> there That's you a go. different subject altogether. But anyhow, <laughs> I did hear you guys congratulate Dan. So I would like to add my congratulations as oh, well. And also right. my personal appreciation for the fact that Dan uh, keeps the ship floating here. That's right. Uh, I know. Even though I harass him about my, uh, it, you know, my segments. He loves in, it. In he wouldn't train, know. He but, wouldn't know what to do without it. I think he's ignoring <laughs> us. Uh, he is ignoring us. <laughs> Dan prefers to be the Wizard of Oz. He only comes out for special occasions like our anniversary show or, you know, my birthday. So let's, All right. Or my birthday. Or Otto's birthday. Uh, but so I, I really want everyone to check out um, on August 2nd, National Night Out. You can call 311 for more details on that. Also, we are fully in summer. Um, and I want to always remind people there are so many pools available in North Hempstead um, to residents for all different costs, depending on different factors. Um, we had a segment a couple of weeks back um, about all the different pools and the requirements for the, the different pools. But I really, um, I, I think you should take advantage of it, especially I know so many grandparents that have their grandchildren and it's it's a great kind of place to bring them to in the community and they're beautiful, beautiful pools. So you can call 311 to, uh, to get all the details on the pools as well. Um, what I also think is really wonderful, you know, I do my research every week for the show and I, I search all to the press releases and because there is so much going on um, in North Hempstead, you know, I'm overwhelmed with all the project independent stuff. And on top of that, there's just so much going on in general. And I think this is really wonderful for town of North Hempstead residents on Tuesday, July 12th at the Yes We Can Community Center. Um, there's going to be two different sessions on uh, Narcan training. Um, it's really important. We've talked about this on our show, you know, in, on, in previous years, we've had people discuss it. And it's really about learning how to prevent an overdose, recognizing an overdose, and responding to an overdose. There's free Narcan kits will be provided <clears throat> to people who come for this training. Um, and I just think it's important. You know, it's unfortunately, it's something that, um, you know, is quite prevalent uh, in on Long Island. And, and just to know that and whether you are doing it just to be aware of it or if you have someone in your family, I think it, it's a great thing and it's a free training. Um, to do that. And they really encourage you to have a, this, a Narcan kit, you know, in your, in your home or, or on you. So just, it's a great thing. I think it's wonderful that the town of North Hempstead is offering this. And obviously you can call three on one for more information um, on that as well. So check that out. Um, and, you know, we love to talk about the grandkiddos on here. And, and I think, um, you know, my grandparents used to always watch me um, in the summer and it was always trying to scramble, but I, you know, I must say I was quite easy. You know, I, I would entertain myself. You know, you give Christine arts and crafts and, and I could spend the whole day doing something. Um, but North Hempstead is also offering a program called Upcycled Kids Crafts Summer 2022. It's for four Wednesdays. 
It started this Wednesday. Um, it's also on the 20th, August 3rd and 17th at Blumfe Blumenfeld Park in Port Washington. Classes are free, um, but you must register for this. And they do all kinds of different crafts with the kids, which I just loved already. I mean, so this week, uh, July 20th, they're going to be doing a little summer tulip kind of craft. The first week they did jar candles. Um, they're going to do some little robot making and, and canning flower pots. It's like a whole bunch of fun things. But if you are looking for something, you know, you're watching your grandkids over the summer, or if you're watching this and you're, you know, you're not a senior, but you want your kids to be involved in something, this is a great little thing. So call 311 to register for that um, as well. What else did I want to mention? Uh, there is something else I had to press. Oh, you know, I love doing the show because people are constantly on top of me researching, um, sending me, please promote this. So the Westbury Fire Department is having a parade and fair on July 9th, which is tomorrow, so Saturday. Um, there's going to be food trucks, fireworks, rides, raffles, um, there's going to be live music. It starts at 5 p.m. and ends at 11 p.m. And the parade is at 6 p.m. along Post Avenue. Um, it is at St. Bridget's. So I just want people to know there's great stuff to do out there. If you're ever looking for something or if there's something fun in the community going on that you would like me to promote, please call, contact me because we like to keep people busy, you know, in North Hempstead. Right, Otto? Well, Christina, in your arts and crafts world, do you ever play with Legos? Oh, yes, I'm so glad. But so I was quite the Lego girl um, when I was a child and I still loved it. And it, I, it's like the the game, you know, first of all, they're very, quite expensive now, I must say, because I've had to buy that for uh, many of my friends' children. But it's really the thing that doesn't go out of style. And Otto, I know you've had a brush with Legoland. Well, yeah, we went to Legoland about three weeks ago, right? I guess after the last show we did. Um, with my son and his family, two boys, 14 and seven years old. Uh, <clears throat> and it was terrific. Um, and it, it was actually different than I thought it was going to be. There was a um, certain amount of rides and stuff like that. But a major part of it <clears throat> was walking through almost like mini cities that right. were built from Legos. Um, you know, it was unbelievable. And uh, what they did and what they made... Uh, is mind-boggling and it's all done with legos um uh, you know obviously people really know what they're doing but it, it was really uh, a very interesting day um you know at that um uh, it, it's you know it, it's pretty big and you got to be able to walk fortunately you know bunny's still on recovery from her knee replacement so we were able to uh rent an electric scooter which okay. was great because I'd say we covered about 6,000 steps, uh, wow. which is like three miles of walking. Um, but it was terrific. It was really uh, very enjoyable for the kids and the older people. You know, it was both. There were some rides there, uh, which were uh, good. Um, and uh, the, uh, the, the stuff that was made out of Legos was unbelievable, really right. unbelievable. Oh, see, but you know, and I like, you know, I love when our show takes a turn and it's like we planned it, but we didn't. But I think this segment, we shared a lot of great things that are fun for, as you had mentioned, for the whole family. And, and I think the personal experience is great. And I think, what does it take, Otto? Like an hour to get there? How long yeah, does it take? Yeah, uh, a little more than that. I'd say uh, it's in Goshen, New York. Right. Uh, we stayed overnight in uh, Middletown, which is another topic. You know, you can stay on site. Uh, and it, frankly, it was about $300 more a night to stay on wow. site. So we went 10 minutes away and uh, wound up at, at Middletown, New York, um, had a great dinner. I'm not giving a commercial here, but Outback happened to be you could walk to from the hotel. And I hadn't been in an oh. Outback in a long time. It was really excellent. Yeah. Excellent. So there Everybody, you go. Like, you know, Outback, you heard it here. Outback. Will yeah, I mean, everybody. Sponsor well, us. Get free dinners now. <laughs> Well, that and that sums up the show today too. Going to Outback and that big onion thing. Yeah, <laughs> now I'm starving. I always leave the show starving. Somehow. Me too. I'm starving too. But what, what a great show! The blooming onion. The, the blooming, blooming onion. onion. Yes. Right. Great right. job, Christina, bringing the show. Great job, you guys. As Glad always. To be back. Thanks, Otto. 
And um, next week looks great managing, not controlling, but managing anxiety and stress. So make sure you listen next week. Have a great weekend, everybody. Be safe, be well, and hopefully see everybody at Fun Day Monday, too. If you were listening to Project Independence and you on 88.1 FM and WCWP.org, have a great weekend.